So listen, um, I'm sure we all know what, what occurred this morning. Uh, my personal opinion is that you all know where I stand on this. Um, do I think justice was served? No. Where do I think justice is? I think this city is still old an apology. And, and let me digress for a moment. When I came on this job, I've been a cop now for about 31 years. When I came on this job, I came on with my honor, my integrity, and my reputation. If someone accused me of doing anything that would circumvent that, then I would want my day in court, period, to clear my name. I've heard that they wanted their day in court with TV cameras so America could know the truth, but no, they chose to hide behind secrecy and broker a deal to circumvent the judicial system. My job as a police officer is to investigate an incident, gather the evidence, gather the facts, and present them to the state's attorney. That's what we did. I stand behind the detective's investigation. I'll let Mary Manuel comment further. One thing is not only do uh, I support uh, the hard work of our police officers, the defective units, but I'd like to remind everybody, a grand jury indicted this individual based on a, only a piece of the evidence that the police had uh, collected in that period of time. So a grand jury actually brought the charges. I think on two things I'd like to say, or three things I'd like to say. One, on financial costs, this $10,000 doesn't even come close to what the city spent in resources to actually look over the camera, gather all the data, gather all the information that actually brought the indictment by the grand jury. On many, many multiple different charges. Second is what I would call the ethical cost. And the ethical cost is you have, a, as a person who was in the House of Representatives when we try to pass the Shepard legislation that dealt with hate crimes, putting them on the books, that President Obama then signed into law, to then use those very laws and the principles and values behind the Matthew Shepard hate crimes legislation to self-promote your career is a, is a cost that comes to all the individuals gay men and women who will come forward and one day say they were a victim of a hate crime who now will be doubted. People of faith, Muslim or any other religious faith who will be a victim of hate crime. People that have also of all walks of life and backgrounds, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation. Now this cast a shadow of whether they're telling the truth and he did this all in the name of self-promotion. And he used the laws of the hate crime legislation that all of us collectively over years have put on the books to stand up to be the values that embody what we believe in. This is a whitewash of justice. A grand jury could not have been clear. To then say, not only is the cost, the $10,000 doesn't come cost financially, but all the other repercussions of this decision it made to me where is the accountability in the system? You cannot have, because of a person's position, one set of rules apply to them, and another set of rules apply to everybody else. In another way, you're seeing this play out in the universities, where people pay extra to get their kids a special position in universities. Now you have a person, because of their position and background, who's getting treated in a way that nobody else would ever, sorry about that, would. Don't get near, I'm doing near my sermon here. <laughs> that would ever get close to this type of treatment. Our officers did hard work day in and day out, countless hours, working to unwind what actually happened that night. The city saw its reputation dragged through the mud, but I remind everybody it was not just the officer's work. That work, a piece of that work, was shown to a grand jury, and they made a decision based on only a sliver of the evidence. And as I remember correctly, somebody wanted to have that evidence in the day, as the superintendent said, their day in court, so all the evidence could be made public. Because of the judge's decision, none of that evidence will ever be made public. None of it. This is without a doubt a whitewash of justice and sends a me clear message 
that if you're in a position of influence and power, you'll get treated one way, other people will be treated another way. There is no accountability then in the system. It is wrong, full stop. Do you blame the state's attorney's office? What I do want to say is, I, uh, the way I look at it is I commend the officers and the grand jury for their decisions. Well, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, our job as police officers is to present them with the evidence. The apology comes from the person that did this. Uh, if you want to say you're innocent of a situation, then you take your day in court. I would never, if someone falsely accused me, I would never hide behind a brokered deal and secrecy, period. But you, you said you have any heads up about this at all, right? I mean, you found out about this today while you were here. Is it unusual for the state's attorney to just drop a case like this without giving you guys some sort of heads up? Well, I, I don't know what's unusual for the state's attorney, but uh, we found out about when you all did. John, from that, from that, wait, so, hold on one second. I, I would say one thing. From top to bottom, this is not on the level. From the state's attorney's office. I, I, you, I understand that piece, but I do want to get... It's not on the level, but I also want to say, and I want to emphasize, underscore what the superintendent just said. In the end of the day, it's Mr. Smollett that committed this false claim upon two individuals and who also testified, but also on the city. Uh, one action, yes, we're looking at the state's attorney. It is not on the level from beginning to end, and there needs to be a level of accountability throughout the system, and this sends an unambiguous message that there is no accountability, and that is wrong. Hey, Superintendent, Superintendent, Don't you think this was incredibly disrespectful to the court hand in hand with the state's attorney's office and your department on cases every day? Well, you know, prosecutors have their discretion, of course. Um, we still have to work with the, the state's attorney's office. I'm sure we'll have some conversation after this. But again, at the end of the day, it's Mr. Smollett who committed this, 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 this hoax, period. If he wanted to clear his name, the way to do that was in a court of law so that everyone could see the evidence. You all know what the bond prophet said. You know, we, we all know what it said. So, you know, I stand by the facts of what we produced. If they want to dispute those facts, then the place to do that is in court, not secrecy. I, I, I want to so, uh, uh, Sir, I want to say one other thing. Mr. Smollett is still saying that he is innocent, still running down the Chicago Police Department. How dare him? How dare him? After everybody saw, and I want to remind you, this is not the superintendent's word against his. The grand jury, a sliver of the evidence, and they came to a conclusion, as did the state's attorney's office. This is not the superintendent and the detective's department word against his. And even after this whitewash, there still no sense of ownership of what he's done. He says that in fact, he is the wrong in this case. This is an unbelievable, not just whitewash of justice, this is a person now who's been let off scot-free with no sense of accountability of the moral and ethical wrong of his actions. From top to bottom, not only disperging the name of the city, but then I cannot stress that in a time when you have people bringing a moral equivalency in Virginia between bigots and those fighting bigotry, then you have a person using hate crime laws that are on the books to protect people who are minorities from violence, to then turn around and use those laws to advance your career and your financial reward? Is there no decency in this man? So Mr. Mayor, do you think that the state's attorney's decision was at all politically motivated? Last question, guys. Hey, look. Was, 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 the, was the decision at all politically motivated? Right, two things. One, to the state's attorney, uh, to the state's attorney, the question about whether it was politically motivated or not is something you have to ask them because only they can answer their motivation. But I do know what the grand jury says, and I keep pointing you back to what the grand jury did when they saw just a piece of the data. And I, and I think there's not a person up here who would love to have all the information made public.
let alone the two individuals who also talk. Do you, you think it was more likely motivated? I, I, wait a second. I, it's not whether I do or not. That's a question that only she can answer. I can only guess at it. To your question, Cheryl, I would just, uh, if you mind repeating it, because I can Yes. His attorney say that he has been vilified, that this case was, uh, the case against him was Judge. He's a person. He's a person that brought this forward. Now I remind you all. It goes back to also a letter. Now he brought the case forward. He said he was a victim of a hate crime, both for his sexual orientation and for being black. The evidence came forward. A grand jury saw the evidence, realized this was a hoax, a hoax on the city, a hoax on hate crimes, a, ho a hoax on people of good values who actually were empathetic at first, and he used that empathy for only one reason. So, uh, only for one reason. Okay, just listen, I'm going to close on this. We just had one of the largest ceremonies for the police department in the history of the city. 297 men and women. Most diverse class representing all parts of this city. People from all walks of life and backgrounds and faiths who said they want to serve the city and serve the values of the city and help serve others in time of need. They are there to uphold the law and they have their best training to do that. And I draw to you in that contrast, people of all walks of life, as I said, graduates of our public schools, kids who grew up with parents were police officers, veterans of the armed forces who have a life of service. They were there to not only uphold the law, but the values that imbue and inform those laws. And now you have an individual who took those laws, turned them inside out, upside down, for only one thing, himself. And that, in my view, is an insult and an offense to every one of us who collectively uphold those laws because they reflect who we are as a city and because of the hate crime legislation that's federal, who, they, who we are as a country. Thank you. Thank you.